Hallelujah. Glory to God. We greet the entire church with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I would like to invite those who can to stand up at this moment to read of the word of the Lord. Mark, the New Testament. Chapter 10, from verse 46. 10, 46. Ten forty-six. See the projection. It says the following. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? Then the blind man said to him, Rabbi, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Amen. The church may be seated.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brother, the text that we just read speaks about Jesus when he was leaving Jericho. The Bible says that the city of Jericho was a city that was taken over and it was destroyed by God's people and this city was cursed there was a judgment upon this church uh, uh, upon this city and it was the last obstacle for the people of God in order to enter it into the promised land the land where flows honey and milk the Bible says that the destruction of that city was a miracle, a wonder that the Lord had, had operated in the midst of the children of Israel. The Bible says that the Lord instructed and the people obeyed God. And they said that they should uh, march around the city for a period of seven days. And in this period of seven days, they would sound the trumpet seven times. And when the trumpet would, was sounded, the people was going to shout and the walls of the city was going to be destroyed and Jericho was going to be taken over and the people would then enter and take over the, the, the land of the promise of God, the land that flows honey and milk. And it's interesting that the Lord spoke about seven trumpets. And now that we are studying the book of Revelations, we have heard about the seven letters, the seven spirits of God, the seven trumpets. And a few days ago, the Lord, the pastor spoke about the trumpets that three have already sounded, and the fourth at any moment, where the church is going to be uh, raptured. So now it is showing a time that passed, something that happened, a couple of a couple of thousand years ago and a few one years ago but the word of god is alive and it is very contemporary to our days and when it speaks of seven it speaks of perfection the seven musical notes the seven colors of uh, the rainbow seven days of the week, six days to work, and seven to rest. And Jesus said, you will find rest for your souls. In Jericho was that city. And when that city was taken over by the people of God, when God destroyed that city, the prophet that came after Moses, Joshua, He cursed the city. Whoever edifies that city, the firstborn will die at the beginning of the construction. And at the finish of the, the construction, the youngest son is going to die as well. And time passed by. In the period of the kingdom of Ahab, Jezebel, we just spoke about this. We, when we had um, Sunday school a while ago, a man called Ariel, he forgot about this curse of the judgment that God had determined a while ago, a while in the past. And he re edified the city. And then his first son, he was, first son was born, was, was, he died, and then at the end of the city, the youngest died. The first died, and then the last one died. Died the Alpha and the Omega. So then, tonight we can take as a lesson for us this word. My brother and sister, do not rebuild what God destroyed in your life. 
the obstacle of God that existed in order for God to bring you to the promised land, to the promise where it flows honey and milk. You can say in our days for the eternity of God, God has already removed with great might in my life, in your life, in our lives. So do not rebuild what God has destroyed. Because if we do this, we are going to lose our firstborn. We are going to lose salvation. We are going to lose the youngest, the new birth. But my brethren, the Bible says that Jericho was rebuilt. And Jesus was remind, uh, remembered this, that there was a, a judgment upon Jericho over the inhabitants of Jericho. And Jesus was going to Jerusalem. And it was the moment of his triumphant entrance in Jerusalem. A celebration was being done at the Feast of uh, Easter, Passover. And he went to, with the disciples to celebrate this Passover and was the triumphant entrance of Jesus into the Promised Land. The project Jesus is passing in our midst. And at any moment, in the book of Psalms, open your gates over your doors. That it will enter the King of Glory. And who is this King of Glory? Yeah, uh, Sean God in the battle. He is the King of Glory. And this great multitude, and their people, tongues, and nations, they will be following, following him in his triumphant entrance in, into the new Jerusalem, the new land, new heaven the Lord has prepared for our lives. And my brethren, God is good. And before the judgment, God will always use of mercy to our lives. There was a judgment in Jericho. And Jesus passed by Jericho in order to f deliver a man from his judgment. There was a judgment over this world. And Jesus is passing by this world. His project is passing by. It's not going to be staying here. It's just passing by in order to take men out from under this judgment of the sentence of death and eternal condemnation. And the word says, my brother, that as he was passing by Jericho, there was a man there called Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus is not a name. We know that. Bart means son. Timel is the name of his father, the son of Sabbath, the son of a renewed the son of Ronaldo, Ronaldo Jr. So Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. Timaeus comes from Greek, and its meaning is fortunate or honored. So a son of a, a fortunate or an honored man, the son of an honored father, was blind sitting on the side of the road and he was begging. Speaking of Bartimaeus and his his story, and Jesus had compassion, gave him cure and redemption, and 
he was, the Bartimaeus was happy on his work. He began to follow Jesus, just what we just read in the Bible. The lyrics was what we just read in the Bible. This song of our children already anticipated the end of the message, blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, my brethren, children, a child of a, a fortunate father was blind and was sitting on the side of the road begging. And who is more honored than God? Who is more fortunate than God? So the Son of God was blind, sitting on the side of the road, begging. And how many children of God? How many children of an honored father like our God? Fortunate like our God are living in this situation. How many of them are, are in darkness, seeking the light? How many of them are on the side of the road? How many of them are begging? How many of them are begging? Many. How many of them are at this moment living in Jericho? How many of them are at this moment uh, living under a judgment? But how many also uh, are not at this moment desiring to go up to Jerusalem? How many of them are not desiring to participate on this feast? How many of them uh, are not desiring to enter with Jesus to his triumphant entrance. Many. And Bartimaeus, he was a person just like that. He was a person that had no name. You can you imagine that? A person that has no name. Before I was born, I already knew the name that I was going to give to my children. And I believe that every father and mother is concerned with this. He was a son of a fortunate and honored father, but he was a son who was despised. A, a son without honor. A son that we could say nobody cared about him. But there's a text in the Bible that says, my brother, it called my attention. Can a mother forget about her son? To the point, even if a mother forget about her son, but my, you, uh, me, your God, I will never forget about you. Bartimaeus could have been forgotten by every person, but God never forgot about him. In Bartimaeus, my brethren, the Bible says, speaks, says that a crowd, a multitude, was passing with Jesus. And the multitude expressed themselves like this, Jesus of Nazarene. And once Jesus was in Nazareth, he entered on the temple, was a Sabbath, and they were studying the book of Isaiah. And when he opened the book of Isaiah, the text was saying, the Spirit of God is upon me to proclaim good news to the captive and free the prison and give sight to the blind. And when Jesus closed the book, he said, Today is fulfilled in your midst the scriptures. And you know what happened with Jesus? Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth that day, he was expelled from that city. Did you know that? Jesus was expelled from that city. An apostle Jesus, he said, Jesus of Nazareth, can 
any good thing come from Nazareth? So then the crowd, they were not uh, spreading good news because the crowd was proclaiming Jesus of Nazareth. But when Bartimaeus, when he heard Jesus of Nazareth, he didn't call upon Jesus of Nazareth. Many times, man, I like this, they follow Jesus, son of David, but thinking that Jesus, son of David, is Jesus of Nazareth. Sometimes we how can I say, like, like the word says, we, we make things that are very common. <coughs> the crowd turned the presence of Jesus something very common. Jesus had operated signs and wonders and miracles. He had made the, the dead resurrect the deaf to hear again, had multiplied the bread and fish, had done things that was amazing, that were amazing. But the crowd still thought that Jesus was the Jesus of Nazareth. And how many at this moment are not thinking about Jesus as the Jesus of Nazareth, another prophet that was raised by God? In the Bible, my brethren, my brethren, it says that Bartimaeus, who was blind, he, he realized, uh, we can even say that the, the blind, he saw, he saw something that the multitude was not seeing, that this Jesus who was there was not the Jesus of Nazareth. That that Jesus that was there, past my Jericho, was a Jesus, son of David. Jesus, the King. Jesus, the Lord. Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus, the anointed of God. Jesus, the Savior of the world. We cannot just disregard, disregard the worth of Jesus. Jesus is God. He's the Son of God. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is not just another prophet. He is the prophet of the prophets. He is the, sent, the one who was sent by God. He is the Savior of the world. And we cannot turn Jesus we cannot turn the things, the secular things, common. They were even thinking that Jesus was just a common prophet. There was a person called Jesus Iscariotus that they thought that Jesus was so common that they, he decided to sell Jesus for 30 coins. He sold, he sold the king for the price of a slave. We can give the proper worth to the presence of our King in our midst, in our lives. And we cannot exchange a Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and compare Him with a prophet, prophet on, of Nazareth. And the same multitude also exchange Jesus for Barabbas. my bread this is a there is a message in our denomination called the fifth measure and this crowd that the multitude that was there they were in the fourth measure they were in inside of the human reason and Jesus lived a while in Nazareth so then he's from Naz he was a Nazarene but Jesus was not born in Nazareth he was born in Bethlehem so that the prophecies would be fulfilled. 
and was generated in the, into the womb of Mary, was conceived by the Holy Spirit. A son was given to, to us. His name is going to be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Father of Eternity and Prince of Peace. This is the one we are speaking about, of this Jesus, King of Kings, Son of David, Son of Promise. And the crowd, they, want, they wanted that man to stop talking. Like if they were saying, look, look, you don't even have a name. Nobody cares about you. Do you think that Jesus is going to waste his time with you? And in fact, Jesus doesn't waste time. He makes man enter into the time of God so then that man can leave eternity. So then people, they complained and he was pleading. Son of David, have mercy on me. That's the only thing that I can do is to plead and to ask and God have mercy on me because through my works the wage of sin is death but the gift of God is, is free is, and it's only through the mercy of God and the love of God is the cause of man not to be consumed and the love of God has sent Jesus so that whoever believes in him not perish in Jericho not be left under a, a judgment a sentence of death but go to Jerusalem and have an eternal life with God and this is the desire the desire of Bartimaeus have mercy on me and he pleaded and Jesus stopped Jesus stopped to help that man to give assistance to that individual a man who was the son of an honored and a fortunate man and today Jesus is passing once again through this place to give assistance to the son of the honor and fortunate man that many times is being despised to answer to the one who pleads is not pleading for the for Jesus and not the Zazareth. because this is the historical Jesus he was left in history he was he was left in the past but whoever pleads for Jesus the son of David who died and who is alive and he acts and, and manifests in our midst so then Bartimaeus he pleads and the Lord said bring this man when he goes before the Lord it is interesting to say that he uses a word which is master rabbi and the disciples of Jesus they, they called him rabbi they called him rabbi rabbi and rabbi which means master but master is a teacher a person that has a certain type of knowledge has um, he feels that is easy to transfer that knowledge to other people and three times in the word of the Lord we see a different reference about Jesus when Jesus asks the disciples who people speak about him a prophet and you what do you think and Peter received a revelation from the Lord that said you are the Christ the Son of God because why did he say that? Because God the Father revealed that to him. Mary Madeline, she, when she went to the tomb, Jesus had already resurrected. And she saw the person there. And she began to speak with that person. She didn't know that who that person was. But when that person said, Mary, she said, Rabbi, Rabbi means master, but was a master that came from God. Rabboni is an expression that uses for someone who is 
ref- making a reference to God. So when Jesus spoke to her, she answered, "My God, my Master, my Lord, my Guide, my Helper." And because she had, why did she have this understanding? It was because of the sign. Because all the prophets, they died, and they remained dead. All of them. A few prophets resurrected. Elijah did that. Did that. But no prophet was able to resurrect themselves. Jesus is the only prophet of God that resurrects himself to show that he is God, that he is the Lord, that he is the Master, he is the Rabboni. So then she recognized him through, because of the signs. And Bartimaeus he took knowledge of who Jesus was through the signs. There's a blind, before, blind man before Bartimaeus that was healed also by Jesus. And everybody was criticizing uh, regarding that healing. And he said, if this man was not of God, how could he have opened up the eyes of a person who was blind from birth? Never in history there is a story of a man from birth, a blind from birth, could, could have sinned. You can find on the literature and find search in the Bible. If before Jesus, there was someone that was able to open the eyes of a, a person that was blind from birth. There's no mention of this in the Bible or in history. That's why Bartimaeus, he does not plead for Jesus of Nazareth. He was pleading for Jesus, the son of David. He's pleading to God. Because what he was asking, only God could do for him. Only God. My brethren, he was used to uh, begging for alms, but asking for begging, you ask, you beg for when you're asking alms for men. If you need a help, you ask men. But miracle, only God can do. So when he went before Jesus, not to ask for for money or to ask for help. He went there seeking a miracle. And my brethren, when we came to this place here, we didn't come here to ask for a little help, a little support, because we are not in the presence of Jesus of Nazareth. We came here tonight to ask for a miracle. And how the song goes, it says that a miracle is our lives here. And he came into the presence of God. And Jesus spoke to him, saying, What do you want? My brother, you are here in the presence of God. You are not in the presence of man. We're in the presence of God. We're going to explain to you why. When we began the service, we began the service with the pleading for the blood of Jesus. I believe everyone remembers this. And the Apostle Paul says we have boldness to enter into the sanctuary of God through the blood of Jesus. So when we plead here for the blood of Jesus, we are transported to another place. We're transported to the presence of God. But going to the sanctuary in a holy place, there was a veil, a curtain, a curtain that separated the holy place from the holy of holies in the sanctuary. But when Jesus died, the Bible said that the veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. The song that said the veil that separated does not se separate us anymore. So you are in the presence of God. You are in the presence of the Son of David. You are in the presence of the one who was sent by God, the Savior of the world. 
the God of the impossible. And what you want, my brothers and sisters, what you want that God do,、uh, God to do for your life. The prophet prophet says, "Plead to me, and I will answer you. I will proclaim to you great things and hidden that you don't know." And I'll guide the blind to a place that he didn't know. It'll make him walk to a path that he never passed by before. It's in the book of Isaiah. What is the path that the blind doesn't know? The path of light. The song that we sang it just says that it's so sad not to see the light. And my brother, it's much more sad is to see the light, and not be able to discern it. Jesus says, "I'm going to make the blind to see, but the blind of Jericho, Bartimaeus, he examined these scriptures." Examine these scriptures because they testify of me, and he knew the scriptures. And the signs that Jesus had already done testified that he is the Son of David. He was the Messiah. He was the Savior of the world. So then he goes in the presence of the Savior of the world, and he asks for the impossible. Nobody had ever achieved that. No blind had their eyes open. Uh, by any prophet, he, so he goes before the master, Rabboni, and he asks, "Lord, I want to have sight. I want to see. I'm tired of staying in the darkness. I want. I'm tired of being on the side of the road. I'm tired of begging. Lord, I want to live a new life in Your presence. And whoever is in Christ is a new creature. And everything is made new. That's what He wanted." And the Lord comes to him and says, "Go. Your faith has made you well. What a wonderful thing, my brother! You can leave this place now in peace because the faith that brought you here, the faith that made you plead for the Son of David, is today, is tonight, is saving your life. Believe in Jesus." And you will be saved. Go in peace. And when he heard this, this words, the Lord operated a second miracle in his life. The first miracle was salvation. Seek the things of the Lord first, and then all everything else will be add, added on to you. So then he received salvation. Go, your faith has saved you. Only Jesus can save man. And the Lord completed the ble- the blessing. What the blessing was? He soon regained sight. He was able to see the entire plan, plan and project of God. The light sh- shone upon him, and he got out of the darkness. Now was live walking in the new and living path. And you know what else he did, my brethren? He followed Jesus on the road, and the blessing of the Lord for your life tonight is a blessing of salvation. There's a revelation regarding your life that you're going to hear about in a few minutes, because God has a project for your life, so that you may receive the blessing that you desire, so that miracle may be. Perf- done in your life, in your in your favor, in your benefit, so that and above all that you may do like Bartimaeus, follow Jesus on the way. Amen.
Hallelujah. I'd like to invite the church to stand up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Holy is your name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Holy, holy is your name, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless be your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Holy is your name, Lord. Bless be your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Holy is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, the Lord has shown through a spiritual gift of woman she's here with us and she has been going through uh, medical follow up and psychological she's taking a couple of medications but these medications are not producing the proper result which is to free up from those problems that she's facing and the Lord has shown that tonight a voice was shouting out for, to her and she came to the service and she is here with us and the Lord has shown that during the service the Lord has operated a deliverance in her life and the Lord wants to send a message to this woman my sister, give yourself away. Accept Jesus as your only and sufficient Savior. And many more things he, is, he has to do in your life and your benefit and your favor. And also there's another spiritual gift that's saying that that man was in a boat that had a hole. In Brazil, we use this expression, it's a, a boat with a hole. Sometimes this brother is in a situation, it's like a boat with a hole. It was leaking, there was water entering, the situation is difficult. But remember what I said about Jericho? There are things that need to be destroyed in our lives. In order for you to be able to uh, reach a project, a greater project that get God has for you, for your benefit. And the Lord has made a proposal for him to abandon this boat. This boat has a hole. The situation is not good. Throw it away. Right? Jump into the middle. Amen? The Lord has a greater project for you. More glorious. He's not going to, uh, not going to allow you to suffer so much. Because the blessing of the Lord is what enriches us. It does not add on pain to us. And the Lord I was, I was showing to this man a new boat, a new resource. And the angel was giving to this man 
everything that was necessary for him to now to navigate comfortably and without worries. So it's, it's a call to your life. Salvation is a complete package. Believe in Jesus, you'll be saved. First, the kingdom of God and all the other things will be added on to you. Lord, we praise you and give you honors. We're thankful because once again we're here in this place because your project that was of passing by us to rescue us, to hear your plea, our praise and our adoration. We praise you, Lord, and adore you because it's been great. You are being great and your mercy has been with us. Take us home in peace, Lord, and under your protection we say, you pray in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit to be with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. The brethren can sit down. Our service has come to its end. I'd like to remind the brethren that we are in the week of the, pr the prayer in noon, at noon. And the topic is for of our family members. I'd like to remind also that next month we're going to have in St. Louis, Port St. Lucie, a seminar with the entire church. And the brethren has up to Wednesday. Don't wait until Wednesday. Do it today. To, for you to do your registration to participate on the seminar, one day seminar. You who are here with us want to say that you are very welcome. We have services here Wednesday at 8, Thursday at 8, Saturday at 7.30, and Sunday we have at in the morning, 10.30 in the morning, and Sunday night, 7.30. You are invited to return, to come here more times. If you need a prayer for your life, a clarification of the word or the spiritual gifts that have been shared. Remain where you are and raise your hand so we can identify you and the brethren are going to go towards you and give you the proper assistance. Thank you. 